Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. He committed no crimes. He did nothing wrong. He was without sin. He never should have been executed, just as no one should ever be executed. He came to deliver and save all people. His method was teaching and healing. His way was justice with peace. His message was pure love. When soldiers and betrayers and the fearful religious establishment came for him, he told his followers to put down their swords. When they beat him and tore his back with whips of nails, he prayed for them. When they mocked him, he absorbed their hatred and derision. When they nailed him to the cross, he cried to his father in the midst of his pain. And out of his loneliness and agony, he asked for God to forgive. As he stretched out on the crucifying tree, he asked God, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Who were they? Who was them? Was it Caiaphas and the Jewish leaders? Was it Herod and Pilate? Was it Peter and Judas? Was it all of the other disciples and followers who abandoned him? Was it the Roman soldiers and centurion who executed him on the lynching tree? Was it all of the world who did not know him and did not care about his pure love? Was it you? Was it me? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Who was the them that needed forgiveness for their lack of knowing, for their lack of compassion, for their judgment unto death, for their untold abuse and neglect of their own. Who were they who lacked love? I believe it was everyone. Everyone needed forgiveness for what they had done and for what they had left undone. Then, as now, we hear his cry to us, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Whenever we act like black lives really don't matter, or ignore children and families separated and imprisoned and caged, at our southern borders and inside our nation, or when we turn away from neighbors who are Asian American and act as though no one said anything here, or when we abandon our elderly, or when we turn a blind eye to the execution of yet another sister or brother in our nation or when we forget single friends who have been living in isolation and facing tremendous loneliness in the midst of separation from family and other friends, or when we fail to hear the weeping of our teens as they cry out of their emotional and spiritual pain, 
or when we fail to hear the real tears and lamentations of our children who cry themselves to sleep, or when we miss the anguish of our unemployed or severely underemployed neighbors and friends, or when we fail to hear the cries of the poor or see the hungry and homeless men and women and children on the front steps of our church and on our streets, or when we turn a blind eye when police would wound and kill rather than protect and serve, or when we adopt dogs and cats but leave children orphaned and abandoned without family, or deny the existence of a killer virus and its deadly effect and side effects on tens of millions, or when we call an insurrection a peaceful demonstration and murder an accident, or when we forget hardworking parents who are working to raise their kids and teach them as their students under the stress and trauma of pandemic times, or when we blame everyone else for what is ours in our behavior, or when we lack human decency and integrity and love, I can hear him cry, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Every one of us, every one of us, still needs forgiveness for all we have done and for all we have left undone. As our Savior hangs on the dying cross tonight, I ask you to remember him. And remember this, that every word, every step, every just action, every prayer, every song, every dance, every healing, every teaching, every sigh, every breath, even unto his very last breath, was offered in love. Jesus loved us unto death. Amen.